today I'm building a coat rack for our house. And just out of some old materials that I had lying around and something that I had purchased, but I'm not gonna use it for its intended uh, purpose. I'm gonna use it for something different. So basically I'm gonna make these uh, coat, the coat rack out of these pieces of aluminum scrap that I get from uh, my father-in-law. Uh, they use them at his work and then they just toss them out after they've used them, these little uh, pieces of aluminum. Some of them have holes in them, some of them don't. So I picked together some of the nicer ones and uh, basically just, I sand them down just a little bit. They don't need a whole lot of work, but just to round out the corners and kind of make them a little bit even. And then bend them in my vise so they end up like this. And I'll show you a little bit more of this detail. I actually kind of like the way the aluminum looks after you kind of sand it and uh, wipe it down a little bit. But uh, for this purpose, we're actually gonna spray paint them black uh, to put them on this board. This is just a piece of shelving board uh, that I got from Home Depot, Lowe's, one of those places, some time ago. Originally, my purpose was gonna be, I was gonna use it as a standing desk and kind of stain it and treat it as something I could use. But the thing is, that was really before we started doing all this farming stuff. And you know what? Uh, I don't really sit at a desk or I'm not at a desk or a computer really at all. So uh, I don't need it for that anymore. But this on the wall will make a nice coat rack. So show you how this is going to look like real quick. Stay tuned until the end and I'll show you how uh, to not make that happen because uh, sometimes you can rush things. But I got a couple more tips. If you want to try this type of thing at home, uh, you know, you can save yourself a little bit of headache and a little bit of trouble by not making the same mistakes that I did. So in order to get these bends in here, I'm going to use them in my vise and try to keep the same consistent bends all the way around. There's a little bit of a pattern in a way that I've kind of figured out that this will work best. I did absolutely experiment on a bunch of different types and shapes. Uh, doing different things and, and trying different places to bend and doing different things. But I really came up with this one that's really simple and it's easy to repeat. It also fits inside my vise and allows for the depth of the vise not to get in the way. So on this particular one, I already did pre-drill the holes in here. They just match the size of the screws that I'm going to use to attach this to the board. But all I use is my little square here set in this particular case at two and a half inches. So all I need is two and a half inches down from the top and that's going to be the big bend. And I just mark that with that. And then I make a small adjustment and take it down to two inches. Go to the other end, make a mark, and then I'm going to back it all the way down to one inch. ish it doesn't really we're not trying to uh, be engineers here but one inch and make a mark there so now basically what i have i have three marks on this thing that will allow for each bend this bend will come up that way and then that one will bend a little bit farther and finally that one's going to bend over to the last bit so here in the vise i just want to line that last mark up that one inch mark right at the top right there and tighten up the vise it's okay if it's a little off. The main thing I'm looking to see is this, if it's kind of flush and kind of square, kind of at a right angle. Now the tricky part comes, is actually bending it over. I found the best way to do this is actually with a hammer and bend a little bit to get that nice straight edge. And that's it. This is that first bend and it looks, well, we're just getting started, but it looks just fine. It's nice and flat down on there. It's nice and square. You can see what that looks like. Nice and square. Now, because of the way my vise is shaped and the thickness of it, it's easiest to flip it upside down, bend it over this one mark here. So now I tighten it up against that second mark, the two inch mark. And now, it's not enough room for me to get my fingers in there, but I just tap it over. Now 
That looks just about right. So now we've got the bottom half of this hook all set. Looks an awful lot like this one. Close enough for me. And now I'm going to take this last bit and then I'll bend it over. But again, based on how this the angles work and everything down in here, I can't quite fit it that way. So I flip it over once again, line it up on that mark, crank it down, and do the same thing. Bending a little bit, but tapping it over right at that hinge. Now since I'm getting a little bit close, I take uh, the other one that I was using to set up and kind of see how close I am. Okay, I got a little bit more to go. Let me test again. Almost. So now I'll just tap it a couple more times. And you know what? That's going to be close enough for me. So in just a so in just a few minutes, I've got two that are almost exactly the same. They're not exactly the same because these blanks weren't exactly the same length when I started. They also didn't have the same angles on anything, and some of them are a little bit crooked. But again, I really don't care. The thing about a coat hook or coat rack is that once you put a coat on here, you're not going to see this thing anyway. So the next thing I need to do is countersink these holes a little bit. I don't have a big fancy countersink drill bit or anything like that. So I tested out all my holes on this thing, kind of trying to get the ideal uh, dimensions for the screw and ended up uh, sticking with this one particular size. It just matched up that screw very, very well. And then I tried a couple other larger drill bits to try and just eat out a little bit of that material to allow the screw head to sit nice and flush, or flush enough, at least for my purposes. So I messed around with a couple different sizes and I came up with this one. And then the best way to just kind of do that is match up the two ends and see if you're kind of close. And that'll do. Maybe just a hair more on that one. I started off kind of eyeballing this and then I said, yeah, you know, better. let me check each one. And then I stopped checking it on one of them. And that one, I kind of got a little bit overzealous, but that's gonna work. I kind of got a little bit overzealous and I ended up putting a bigger hole and going all the way through. So you do have to be careful when you're doing this, especially with the aluminum. So what I'm going to do around this one is I'm actually just going to put a different screw in there and uh, that one fits okay and it'll be, a, yeah, it'll look a little bit different, but uh, again, it's not that big a deal. It'll be covered up with a coat. Okay, so now I'm in the back of the shop here, uh, just in a little place that's kind of out of the wind. And this is all I do for the screws because I'm not going to go out and buy the special black screws. I'm just going to use what I have on hand and paint it all. Uh, there might end up with a little bit of black that shows after I screw these in, but again, I can touch that up. It's really not a big deal. Uh, even Magic Marker works pretty well to touch that type of stuff up. But just using some, it's just some paint left over from uh, working on a grill. So here we go. I'm actually going to paint just this one side and just this one direction, and then I'll flip them over and get the other side another direction later. Uh, but this will help me be able to do this and then go stain the shelf and come back and do the other side and pretty much everything will be all ready to go pretty much at the same time. So here it is one day later and uh, looks great. Real happy with, uh, with how it turned out. But there's one other step I want to take and I'm going to actually add some boiled linseed oil to this to kind of just preserve it a little bit. I love the color and I love the way it looks but I want to put a little bit of something on there 
to kind of help seal in this uh, this look and it also gives a little bit of a sheen. I don't want to go with any poly or anything. It's just it's not necessary. We don't need to keep this protected from weather and stuff like that. It's really just uh, something to look at. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to let it uh, soak in. The thing about a finish a linseed oil finishes. I really don't have to wipe off any excess. It's gonna, it's gonna soak in uh, pretty well. And I'll come back and look at it because there are gonna be some spots here along the grain where it absorbs a little bit more readily than others. So I'll probably do one more uh, coat on it based on what I see here in a few minutes. I'm gonna go do some other chores around the farm and come back and take a look. Okay, it's been a few hours now, uh, about two hours. I've uh, been out doing other stuff, but now I'll come back and take a look at this. You can see where it's uh, really soaked into the wood, just got, like I thought it would, in those really uh, intense grain areas, but it's kind of sitting on top in some of the others. It looks really good, but I really want a little bit more on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit more um, linseed oil on top of it right now, let that soak in, and then take a look. I uh, won't be able to get to it uh, anymore today, but I'll take a look at it again tomorrow, and uh, hopefully she'll be ready to finish up by then. Okay, so it's done. I'm happy with it. It's got, uh, I think it's three coats of linseed oil I ended up putting on there. And um, that looks about right. I just took one, a nice clean rag and wiped it all down to get all the excess off. But this is pretty much exactly what I was looking for. It's got a little bit of a sheen, but it's not really too, too bright. So now I'll go about the part of laying out the hooks. And I think they turned out pretty nice as well. Got a nice matte black finish. I really don't want to use a drill for this if I don't have to because it takes it tends to mar up the inside of the painted edge too much. So what I'm going to do to keep all this simple is I'm just going to use a regular nail to uh, as a punch to make sure that my screw holes don't go crazy on me. It's just a stick and a nail. Nothing fancy. Now with that first set screw, I can make any adjustments I want to, and it's pretty much not going anywhere. Okay, so here it is finished. Now all I gotta do is uh, hang it up. I've got a couple little places I may touch up, but I may not, where, uh, with a screwdriver, you know, kind of put some Mars in it. What I'll do inside is I've got some of these uh, uh, deck screws that I've already painted the tops of, and I'll line it up on, on the studs in that space, and wherever that happens to be, I'll just put a couple of these screws in there, and it'll be nice and flush mounted to the wall. All good to go, nice, super strong, and sturdy. Very happy with how this turns out. It fits exactly into this spot. I didn't have to cut the board at all. I didn't have to do anything, which is just very fortunate. Now, something I wish I had done, I didn't measure this out ahead of time, but the actual studs for this wall are right here, but they're just a little bit off from where I've put the hooks. Had I known that, I would have measured these 16 inches exactly on center, and then I would have been able to adjust this a little bit and screw right through here without putting an additional screw up here. Overall, very happy with the project. Got about uh, probably, I think about $30 into the whole thing, and if you were to buy this, uh, off the shelf someplace else, it would cost probably three times that, maybe more. And I had a good time doing it. it. Took about three hours altogether of total work time. There's a lot of dry time in between the coats of uh, stain plus the different layers of in linseed oil that I put on there and some of the alignment. But quite honestly, setting up the uh, video and trying to film this thing made it take a whole lot longer than it actually would had I just jumped right in and gotten after it. But thank you again to everybody. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. So a couple things didn't go quite as well as I had hoped. I ended up breaking a couple of these as I was bending them on that first try. And everything I did was exactly the same as before. Put it in there and bent it over. But I found that if you bend it too fast, they would just snap. I had two snap in a row and I think I was just trying to horse them over instead of taking my time with it. So the best practice was to kind of just put a little bit of pressure on it slightly and then just tap it home. 
The other thing that really didn't go particularly well was that I used this styrofoam for screws because it's just easier than trying to screw each individual screw in there and just all I have to do is push it down to be able to paint screws. But by putting these on the styrofoam as well, I thought I'd save a step. But what it ended up doing is having a lot of that styrofoam and the paint stick together. So now I gotta clean this up just a little bit. Uh, it seems like most of it's coming off of my finger, but anyway, wish I hadn't done that. So if you are gonna try this little countersink method, then uh, you need to be careful that you don't actually go all the way through it. And the last little thing I hope that goes with this is this one is one of them that I was bending as a, as a backup because uh, I had a, my after I broke those two and this one well it's just too easy to bend so it uh, had to go back into the scrap heap so unfortunately um, you know, got to watch some of the materials that you have but the same principle would be able to work if you went to your local Home Depot uh, Lowe's your your big box store and you can buy those little flat pieces of steel or uh, any material really that you want and then you can do the same thing with a one inch two inch mark and a two and a half inch mark and you'd make one of these